<clears throat> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Starting a, a live stream with a cough. Don't you just hate it when, you know, the phone rings, pick it up, and then the person who called you up starts coughing? <laughs> I just did that, but just with a live stream. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Oh, well, I just emptied a glass of water in a hurry. <laughs> now I actually need to fill it up and just take a small sip. I just got a, a little bit of water on the wrong throat, side of the throat. <clears throat> mm. Okay. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a rabbit hole today, like jumping from one topic to another because I just finished watching Lori Paint Girlie's upload where she is taking a Daphne's diary mag magazine, totally dismantling it and creating a small journal. And it just, uh, you know, it, it made me think, you know, <laughs> I got a, a bunch of these Daphne's diaries and I'm still not able to cut in them or slice them up or, or whatnot. But I kind of understood the approach that Laurie, she had, because she was actually taking consideration of each page. Like, she didn't just cut it um, without looking at it. She she looked at each page and figured out that this could be a, a front cover. And, and then if she found something that she really liked, like, uh, let me find an example. Do, 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 do. Okay, something here. If she wanted this globe to be on a page spread, she would cut that differently and then assemble her journal accordingly to what kind of picture, like here. She would presumably make sure that this would be the page spread so she would only trim off the top and the bottom instead of just cutting it in half. I really like that approach. Well... <laughs> Like I said, I have not yet had the guts to cut in my Daphne's uh, diary. But I was so lucky that I won a giveaway at Didi's channel where she took an art magazine and cut it up. So I'm waiting for that in the mail. And I'm going to assemble that little book and try and work with Laurie's idea and see what what comes up. Um, Didi called it an, a magazine journal, I think. Yeah, magazine journal. I th yeah, that's have to be it. <laughs> and uh, it's something that I have heard several years ago. So I think it's way back in 2018 that I made my, my first and only magazine journal. And I thought I would make a flip through of that. The magazine that I took. The whole idea was inspired by D.D. Willingham, and it is to take a magazine, just a random catalog, so uh, and turn it into an art journal. So I chose a catalog from the cloth manufacturer, Gudrun Schuden. Is there any page left? <laughs> but okay, it's a Scandinavian cloth designer, and... I got some of their designs and styles, and as you can see, you know, it's very likable. Okay, so I wanted to flip through this to, uh, yeah, also just to flip through it. It's fun to see. It's Sunday the 14th of October 2018, so it's been a while, right? And on the first page here, there is uh, how to draw an owl. Direction number one, step one, draw some circles. Step two, now draw the rest of the fucking owl. And then it's just totally intricate. <laughs> That's just hilarious. I think there is a lot of different pages in this because at this time where I made this uh, magazine journal, you know, it was just in the beginning of my art journal. So... This is definitely a Lindsay the Frugal Crafters paint along where I'm practicing the grisaille art style where you first go in with um, gray tones 
and then add colors on top of it. So when you add the colors, you will automatically get the shading. And here I'm using the, <coughs> I'm sorry, the Faber Castell Pit Artist Pens. Oh my God, <laughs> I really have them for, let me see. It's five years. I still have them. They're still juicy and functioning. But okay, that's <laughs> that's a fun trip down the memory road, you know, recognizing art supplies that are now five years old. And here it's like Halloween. I, I can definitely tell that this is squash. So I must have gotten my first uh, gouache palette at that time. But here you can see some of the original print from the magazine. And here I just covered it. Ooh. <laughs> it's fun for me to see these drawings. Okay, this is totally from the magazine. And I love this um, magazine because they're carrying on the tones on the page spread. So um, that's likable when you're having an art magazine. Here I'm playing with Posca pens. And then I'm also, um, I was following Patty's palette and I don't know if it's Patty Tolly Paris or if it's another Patty. I should be better at writing that when I'm making notes, right? <laughs> but apparently she's dividing her palette into a different division that I normally would do, which is to have all the bright, cold tones here, and then, no, differently, all the warm tones here, all the cold red tones, all the cool green and blue, and then earth tones in the last end. And then when she's uh, opening her palette like this and she's mixing, like for instance, this tray right here, if I had these pans sorted out just like up here, then I would preserve the mixing pool for each tray coordinating to the pans that's above it. So you could just leave your desk palette and always will have the mixes and you would immediately know that if you have to recreate something, it, it was done with these colors here. So yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, so it's fun to see it again. <laughs> okay, some of these things, I have no idea what happened. Yeah, the gouache set. The fun thing about this uh, magazine, art magazine is that it's just, uh, you're not afraid to play in it. Look, this is the background of the actual magazine. So you can just collage and play on top of it. I found it really difficult to how to actually work with it without covering up all the pages. I think there is a, hi Dabla, <laughs> welcome to my stream. <laughs> I think there is, a... you have to push yourself to include these images in a page spread. And I think that's very difficult. So that's why I have not had another magazine art journal than this one. Like I can see that people suggest that, oh, you just block out the background and then maybe cut her in half and put her in a window or something. Lots of opportunities, but I just find it's so difficult to work with the existing images. Um, Janet M. Young did a stream where she told us that there was this link online where you could download Andrew Loomis book. So this is one of the pages that's downloaded from that book. Oh man, I freaking adore this, this girl here. I remember, I remember that this eye was slightly larger than that one. So that's why I inserted this acetate. So it looks like she's wearing monoculars, you know, like glasses that naturally would en enlarge her eyes a little bit so it didn't look wonky. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, oh man, I really adore this. Uh, I think it's done with oil pastels. This is, was a fun technique. 
it's where you first do a lot of splatters and colors and textures and then you go on top of it with white gesso and carve out the, the flowers so that was a fun one Ooh, this is fun because uh, right now grid journaling is so super popular and hot again but it's actually like an old thing you know <laughs> So I can I can see that in 2018 I did this page spread. So yeah, oh I love this one <laughs> with the white eyes. That is funny. I actually think that this was a live stream and it was called Blind Pick Six, where you pick six colors. And uh, I gave a number for every pan in my gouache palette and randomly picked six numbers and then went back to the palette and then had to work with these six pens up here. Um, Debbie Epps and I and other people also <laughs> worked with these pick six by first doing this mixing grid so we could see which, which colors we could achieve with the six colors that we picked out. And I think it was just a 2018 thing to do, <laughs> but it was fun to do this um, mixing chart right here. And I recall that we did it even if it was a pick three or a pick six. So it was a fun one. <laughs> what is this? Okay, this is a small joke. Uh, it's a royal visit to the sanitarium for insane people. And then the queen is saying to a patient, do you know who I am? I am the queen of Denmark. And then the patient tells the queen, oh, really? Don't worry. They'll soon get you cured. When I arrived, I was queen of Egypt, Cleopatra. <laughs> Lame joke. <laughs> Here, um, I should actually work on this page, but I think... Oh, if I should do it today, that I would totally cover it up with paint. I think it's difficult to work with these. Oh, here it was very popular to take water and then with the watercolor, plump in the pigment and let it fuss out to create a furry cat. So that's what this uh, page spread is about. <laughs> you liked it? <laughs> I think it's a little bit crazy humor. Okay, okay, now it becomes crazy. Up until now, I don't know if you can imagine that it's been difficult for me to work with this magazine, art magazine, without covering all the pages. So I kind of understand that this, where you glue things on top of it, doesn't really work for me. It's looking so random. So Mary Atelier, she in 2018 in January invited to uh, JB5 and I was playing along. I was thinking that would be perfect to do a JB5 in my art magazine because maybe it could help me to build on top of these paid spreads. <laughs> and what happened was that when the JB5 was over, I was left with 10 extremely ugly page spreads and I was thinking, oh my God, I just wrecked my whole art journal because I want to tear out those 10 pages and just forget everything about them because it was a royal mess, I'm telling you. But then I realized that since this is a catalog that's not like super thick, if I took out that whole section with my JB5, it would leave me with a rather slim um, art magazine journal. And back then we were all in for the fluffy and the fat, you know, the alligator mouth in our journals. So I was like, oh no, I have to leave in the JB5 pages. And then I was forced to work on top of those a second time. So we're talking about layer two, the second uh, layer. And it turned out so good. Look, it is just amazing. This page spread <laughs> is built on a foundation of a JB5. And you can see the relics from the original JB5 with all the things that you had to glue on, the shift in paper layers, 
uh, there is some of that gift wrapping paper here, <laughs> some uh, jelly prints. But all I did was just to look at the page one more time and build on top of it. And this up here, the border is from the original magazine spread. So I love this. It's it's so um, layered up. And I can recognize several of the layers from the original JB5. And then how I struggle to put some balance into the nightmare of a page spread. <laughs> I don't know, you guys know how JB5 sometimes turns out. This is just stunning. Look how wonderful it is. It is just a, a thick, thick collage of all kinds of paper. And I love how crazy, crazy it looks with all the colors that just merges through. A lot of these textures are the JB5 poking through the the top layer so you can, you can see some of the, the words that we put in yeah it's amazing i just love it such you know really like a yeah also this one here is also super stunning for me to look at and all i did was to bring some balance into the page spread by working with that art nouveau uh, style and then all the mess that I had in the borders, I just transformed into some sort of a background and then topped it off with, uh, in this case, a floral where I just painted in all these small flowers. But this is like the gift wrapping paper <laughs> that's going to show up on almost all the pages. <laughs> this is just amazing. And this one also, I really, really love it. <laughs> it is just um, a lot of bright colors. I hope that the screen shows how vivid and bright these pages are. Lots of shimmer. I don't know if it if it comes through, but all this uh, layering is just uh, so likable. And what I like about this page spread in in particular is that I got some green tones here and then I got a total pink border and somehow they just make sense because there is a leftover of some pink over here so it doesn't even matter that I put in a frame that was not filling out the whole page right <laughs> so, um, beautiful very good advert for not stopping at the ugly stage yes exactly you know, I had 10 pages that was like hor horrible and I couldn't, I couldn't move. You know, when you get stuck, when you feel that this is going nowhere, I mean, I can't build on this. I just pushed myself and here up here, you can see the original magazine, you know, the JB5 just happened in a rush. So, so up here and all these colors somehow um, just get merged together in, in a, a beautiful thing here i'm not so crazy about this guy here but he was in the jp5 so i just made him hold something that kind of comes out to be this so what i did here was once again i took elements from art nouveau where i just put in at this massive dominating frame and then had a tiny circle where i actually could concentrate on on building a you know something i could draw and what's so funny is that this texture out here is coming naturally from a print of a lot of beers now what i'm telling you that it's beer bottles you can actually see it right but when when you just look at it at a glance the first time it just looks like something from a forest so <laughs> i think that's that's just so funny and this is my absolute favorite, mostly because of the colors. I got like a very shiny turquoise next to a purple or magenta. Uh, and then I got the orange in the border of the circles. And it just, I mean, those three colors are just so yummy together. And I also got a lot of layering here where you can kind of tell that, you know, it's been 
layer on layer on layer. And here we got this gift wrapping paper <laughs> that just seems to poke out on every page. In here, <laughs> some of the text from the JB5. But I really think that it's... Uh, I forgot, you know, how fun it is. Look at that crazy texture I got here. I think it's because it's a gel print that I just glued in and then somehow I was forced to make it into her hair because this area right here was really textured, you know. So, uh, yeah, stencils on top always work to gather in a page spread. <laughs> so this one, I love it a lot. It's not so beautiful when I show it on a on a stream or a screen. It's done with mermaid markers that are... Uh, Hi, Judy. <laughs> Hi, Pam. Welcome to my stream. Um, it's done with mermaid markers, and they're very, like, potent. So it doesn't really show up on the stream, but it's, like, really uh, saturated. Um, yeah, it's almost like alcohol ink, you know, like uh, on Yupo. And I think the reason that I got that was because the... The background layer of this is a wax tissue paper that I gel printed on, and then I glued it down. And then nothing would stay on top of that waxy paper, so I got in trouble. So I uh, chose to use the mermaid markers, and for some reason the mermaid markers just um, stayed on top of that waxy surface, acting like a, a Yupo paper. And then I think I coated it all with some sort of matte medium and then went on top of it with uh, all this pen work right here. And that golden pen work just really pops next to this saturated thing right here. I really like it a lot. This one is also one of my favorites. <laughs> it is so, so art nouveau. I mean, maybe because of the colors. There is this, um, oh man, it, I don't feel like the colors are showing up on my screen. What if I tone down the light? No, it doesn't really. But I'm telling you guys, these colors here are just uh, so harmonic together. For some reason, it's a yellow with green circles here. And then over here, instead of yellow, it's purple. And I think it's some kind of turquoise up here. And uh, the combination of, of those three colors are just awesome. And then I ha it happened to be that the background of the magazine had green um, pages, green colored pages. So I just tried to repeat that green on the inner of the circle and then also on the leaves to kind of gather, gather it together. But there's so much going on in this page spread. And I think it's my favorite because there's it's so busy that I can keep looking at it and finding details. So uh, I think that's most likable about that Art Nouveau style, you know, that it's not like uh, you can just look at it and then go away and then recall it. You have to look a lot of time with the Art Nouveau style because there's so many details, you know. So I think that's what this page spread here reminds me of. Yeah, this one is also super lovely. I love how the JP5, when I top coated it with a glaze of another color, it looks like a forest. It kind of looks like something is going on outside these windows, right? Or something that looks like a hint of a building outside this window. I mean, it's just... Uh, it's just fun, you know, and here up here is that gift wrapping paper just <laughs> ghosting through. <laughs> so, okay, this one I like a lot too. Look, once again, the gift wrapping paper <laughs> just makes me laugh, you know, because I remember that I used that stupid piece of paper on each of my JB5 spreads and I was getting so sick of having to work with it. But uh, here I used a lot of the glitter foil, um, what's it called, flakes, glitter flakes, 
to break up and kind of let it work together with that Christmas gift wrapping paper. So I think it it looks uh, super coppery. There's a lot of um, embossing powder up here. It's very like um, like heavy, <laughs> heavy loaded with uh, a lot of uh, shimmery things. So you almost feel like you're, you're getting like uh, contaminated touching it, but it kind of stays put with the matte medium. But I just love it a lot because it's so rich in the uh, metals and stuff. This page spread, I did not know what to do with it. So uh, it just ended up doing this. And uh, yeah, it's not the best. <laughs> so. This one, oh, I love it so much. You know, sometimes when you have been doing like 10 or 20 drawings, you suddenly do a sketch where you take a leapfrog, where you, you kind of improved or something. And I have this theory that if I do a sketch that I'm really proud of, I stop working on it because I'm afraid of ruining it. And back then, you know, we are in the time period where I did faces like this, you know, <laughs> I suddenly was able to sketch this. And uh, it surprised me how, how good, especially this part of her face is. So I did not continue on this uh, page spread. I just stopped it right there. And I think it's very important when um, you kind of do something that you on the on the paper can see that you did something that was likable. Why should you cover it up with acrylic? <laughs> so that's why this is like, you could say unfinished, but in my head it's finished because uh, yeah, I, I can't work on top of her or couldn't. Maybe I could today. <laughs> but back in 2018, this was really crazy that I did that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is a Danish artist called Peva. I adore his style. He's actually the one who uh, created this mug right here. I super love the way that he's drawing kids' drawings. And I wanted to um, try it out myself. And I found out that it is more difficult than you really think to draw kids' drawings. Because as an adult, you will always correct things. It's so hard to make arms that are coming out, growing out of the hips, you know. As an adult, you want to place them correctly. So uh, this was uh, fun to think of, you know, that I really kind of struggled a little bit to make a kid's drawing. And also that very spontaneous way of adding color uh, and different brush strokes. Look how nice I am inside the lines. I mean, if I had to do this today I think I would think more crazy like painting outside the lines and maybe not placing the arms in the correct symmetric way so one arm could be here and the other one growing out of the hip or something so but I think it's it's um on Danish you would say it can do something like it it's um you have to try it there was something uh, fun and magical about trying to go back and draw as a, as a kid again. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like this page spread. I like it a lot because, as you can see, the JB5 pokes through. You know, there is a ton of, there's like washi tape here. And, you know, it's just um, very likable with the, crazy structure like here you can see I have a tag you can kind of see how the tag is uh, shaped but it's totally uh, almost covered up so only the butterflies is showing through I, I think it's uh, damn it's just likable <laughs> and I like these uh, clusters here that's actually from the JB5 page you know there's a lot of washi uh, I still have those uh, got some tiny leftovers of these washies, so that's why I recognize them. And this is uh, the packaging from a, a lavender soap that I have. 
So, <laughs> but it's likable. It made me think about grid journaling that's so popular and hot right now. Um, looks like a, a mix of uh, Art Nouveau and steampunk. Yes, I think it looks Art Nouveau-ish, but also mixed up with all that grid journaling that's so popular. Uh, and it's just fun to think about that we guys did these things five, five years ago. <laughs> so we must have like a bunch of journals that have got these elements in them. So... And here I got a stencil from Janet M. Young with pandas. And then I uh, turned these areas into this stick figure. And you can barely tell that there is a, a, a stick figure sketch going on here. But I remember that I took it up on the scavenger hunt. I did a scavenger hunt in 2020 where I thought about this page spread here. And we had to do a checkerboard. And then I was thinking about this page spread and thinking like, oh, I can uh, transform uh, the stick figure stuff into the checkerboard from JB5. And there you can see it much more pronounced. Like, like it's, it's much more uh, visible what the stick man is doing. So <laughs> I like it a lot. Don't you like this guy here, like looking outside the, the box? So... Yeah, he's right there, but he's kind of drowning. He's right here in this spread. The stick figure guy is kind of drowning in the, in this page spread. But if you guys are going to try this, just uh, be aware that you can kill a, a marker or a pen when you're drawing on top of this. This is like, you know, we're back in 2018 where <laughs> stenciling is hot, you know. And I even I can tell that I stenciled with um, crackle paste or something. So uh, be aware that you don't kill your marker. If you go on top on a layer like this, where there's like stenciling paste and acrylic and stuff like that. So you would need like even, I would say, maybe a water-soluble black Tombow where the nib is uh, more flexible. Um, but I'm not even sure that it would adhere to this uh, substrate here. <laughs> um, among how grit is coming back again. Yes. Hi, Riri. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. And this is how some of the JB5 starts up. Um, you know, the prompt is first paint and then glue in paper. So I think these are, yeah, this is like the first start where you just paint. Yeah, I don't think that there is anything there. Black gesso, it was hot in 2018. I think Eileen was the one who, you know, convinced me to use black gesso. Oh, I remember this one. I was practicing on, you know, I had the done black gesso on the page. And then I did a spread with a spatula with that crackling paste because I just got it. And then I learned that that was kind of stupid because it would totally warp up your page. Look how <laughs> crinkled it is. And I, I seem to remember that when this dried, it was like curled over like. <laughs> so I kind of learned that. If I want to use this crackle paste, it has to be on somewhat of a firm straight that's been firmed out like a JB5 page with a lot of um, layers on top of it and dry acrylic so it's more stiff. So, yeah, I don't know. I think this is from either Daphne's diary or a coloring book. This is another sort of texture paste, and uh, it's actually mermaid markers on top of this. What I learned about this here was that this kind of texture paste soaks up all the pigments and return them looking faded, like, like they have this veil of chalk on top of it. So it's very difficult, I think, to work on top of stenciled if you have to color it in. So, oh, this is, 
Let me see. Eileen did a blind six where she was coming with some prompts. And the prompts was stencil, texture paste, gauze, paperback, quote, and new color tools. So that's why this is made on a brown paper bag with stencils. And the gauze is the parachute. <laughs> These uh, prompt pages makes no sense if you don't know, you know, the day of why. <laughs> Yeah, I think that was the last page. But yeah, it was fun to revisit this. Um, what was it that did you call them? Magazine journals, right? <laughs> so that was, uh, this, this is my magazine journal, the one and only. And I think that uh, I won this giveaway from um, her stream where she is, uh, have been cutting up a magazine that I can turn into a mini journal. So now I'm totally waiting, you know, <laughs> for that to arrive because I'm not sure that I can cut in my Daphne's uh, magazines. They're just so inspirational and I really... I, I, Laurie Paint Girl is so brave. I can see I can see what she means, like like... No matter what you cut in the page spread like this, it would be beautiful if you got this corner up here or that corner. Like, uh, like it's it's a good idea to take a very visual, even um, like inter interior decorating machine machines <laughs> magazines or um, Venetian or garden magazines where some pictures are made to be cut up into small uh, journals i can i can see where she's going with it and i can't wait for for her to work with it more uh, laurie is actually soon hitting 2000 subscribers so what she's working on at the moment oh my god look at that he needed a cup warmer i'm sorry that was a rapid trail i am so going to do that how cute is this Oh my god, I think I can do that. Oh look, that is so cute and it will be so nasty because you know you have to leave a, a gap up here for your lips. So if this one was touching the top, you would like mess it up when you drink, you know. Okay, that was a, a rapid trip. <laughs> gonna leave this page spread open and see if I can have fun with this during the weekend because I got some leftover yarns you know okay but now I kind of talked myself out of my chain of thought <laughs> it was something about uh, yeah Laurie is going to give away she's working on three journals that she made out of a Daphne's diary magazine and then she's gonna give away maybe one or two for when she reached uh, 2000 subus so hang on to her channel and watch the development of that <laughs> let's see judy uh saying panda balloon festival yeah <laughs> oh no <laughs> it was a stencil gifted to me by janet m young these pandas i should use it some more Okay, what also was gifted to me was some happy mail from Sandra. And um, she actually sent me two envelopes. First came an envelope where she had a lot of uh, kind of stickers and rub-ons. And then she sent another envelope where she forgot to include these um, pages, copy pages here. And I love them a lot. Two of them I did not glue into my journal because I think I can trace some of these borders in the future. Like what a pristine, nice corner this is. So I don't want to glue this in. I love this. Like it's very like Viking, you know, <laughs> it sparks joy to me. So I'm not going to glue these in because I think I can trace them. But this up here is so detailed that I won't be able to trace it. And this is very small and intricate. So I would just, uh, I would need four cups of coffee <laughs> if I should trace this, you know. I'm so lazy that I suddenly like, oh, here comes a big flower. <laughs> and then continue on the corner. 
<laughs> but I think I would love to use my colored pencils to pencil these in. And then I am actually trying to work with the stickers that she gifted. And I'm using watercolor and um oh I didn't know that I actually could softly peel them up. I ran into problems, you see. I glued them down, and then when you come next to it with watercolor, you will have this, you know, this place where there's no coloring. So I had to leave the tail of this koi fish rather white so that it would blend in with the white from the sticker. But I'm looking at this page spread. I had to deviate from not using my Art Nouveau palette because I thought that this was calling for a lot of shimmer because there is a lot of um, shimmer on this. It's almost like, um, oh, I know the Danish word for it. Hol Can I translate it? Just holographic? Is, is that an English word? It's like a holograph, Ho hologram. Hologram. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just making up words right now. But it, it's like uh, there's a lot of shimmer on this, so that that's why I got a lot of shimmer on the things I painted here. Uh, yes, yes, Laurie does so many cool things. She's so brave, you know. She's just like PB Longstocking. Oh, that looks funny. Maybe I can do that. So then I just do it. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Tabla. Holographic. That's a word. Um, but anyway, I think uh, I would love to make it Art Nouveau-ish. And the way to do it could be with washi tape, right? This is my uh, humble collection of washi. This is all my washi. <laughs> I know that some people will be like, oh, my God. <laughs> But uh, look at these. They're kind of fun. Um, oh, this one also. I was thinking maybe you can get like a faux Art Nouveau look with washi if you place them as some sort of borders or something. So let me dig out the ones that I think have the same color scheme as this sticker here. But what wonderful stickers. Sandra got so many beautiful things. Oh, this is also nice. Now I'm taking out all of them. Oh, this one too. Okay, maybe I should... Uh, oh, this one is a white one. That could be fun. Maybe I should start limiting myself. Okay, I'm going to limit myself and see that's what I had. <laughs> so with these uh, tape as borders... I think we can do like a faux Art Nouveau-ish page spread. And then I'm thinking, because, you know, I got a problem. The back of this page is this. <laughs> it's very, there's a lot of thing glued on it. And it's, uh, there is a glitter glue making an in, like a dent in the paper. So it's actually a Peter to work on top of this. It's very like, like paint would uh, fall into these ditches. So I think I need to glue some paper on top of this to be able to work with this because uh, I also have stickles, you know, and the stickles dries up with this very raised profile. So all of this area here would be annoying to have as a back on the paper if I come on the other side trying to do something with a pencil or something. So, yeah, let me see if we can... Um, uh, doo -doo. Hi, CP. <laughs> Welcome to my stream. Um, let me see. Should we just go nuts and then just plaster this up with uh, some collage pieces and then try and figure out how to do the grid that's going to transform it into an Art Nouveau. I think we will do that. This is a leftover of the sticker that Sandra gifted me. So um, my plan is, of course, to make a round shape and paint either her or her face inside that shape. Yeah, okay. We'll see. 
I've learned that I should not talk too much about what the plan is because I'm totally changing it up sometimes when I go along and then uh, regret when I'm shifting gear <laughs> that I spoke out loud, you know. Okay, I do have more washi. I actually have these rolls, but I don't think that they count because it's like ephemera. It's just ephemera. I'm thinking about digging into my box of ephemera and then finding random papers that may have this pinkish color scheme and the way that it's divided up this box is that I got some of that strange sticker uh, washi lookalike things here. I got a wonderful roll gifted to me from CB and I have hoarded it for such a long time that now the glue is actually almost, you know, don't uh, hang on to your things too long because <laughs> they will, like yourself, get older. It still works, but uh, I I must use it now. I think it's, I must. And then, of course, I got some small bits and bobs. Uh, I almost said bits and boobs. We can call it bits and bobs down here. But they are mostly like some sort of vellumish thing, acetate. So I have to be careful with putting these on top because it may uh, disturb the surface if I want to come on top of it with something water, sol water soluble. But okay, let, let's look at the, the paper. The paper. Deb, Deb Smith, hello Deb. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my stream. Lena loved the journal you were showing earlier. Oh my God, that's a magazine journal going way back 2018. Remember that year? That was the year of the fluffette and having like thick, thick journals. So my goal with that magazine journal was actually to get me such a big, uh, fluffy animal, you know, just like uh, the ones that Didi have. But uh, I don't think that I am... Uh, there yet <laughs> it takes you won't believe how much crap you have to glue into that poor catalog before it gets uh, fluffy and totally voluptuous okay look oh this is this is totally art nouveau can you see yes okay maybe i should put this one aside you can use that one I'm not so sure this is Art Nouveau. It's, a, it's something else. It's like a German scrap. Maybe I should go for like plain papers that got that pinkish hue. So this one would work. White always nice because you can tint it in your own color, you know. Uh... This is also a nice one because it's just big. <laughs> it would go faster. I am literally literally carrying my head underneath my arms when I'm picking papers for things like this. I don't have any preferences otherwise than the color. So what I'm looking for here is... Uh, some sort of color that would kind of go this way. Oh, this is fun because there's a hole in it. So I think that should definitely be a part of it. Okay, maybe that's a good starter right there. So let's put these back. You could, if you were like really meticulous, sit and put time in tearing off all the edges so you get like a rib edge instead of this very straight edge and I think I actually would do that if I wasn't streaming but now because I'm streaming I think it's agony for you guys to watch me rip all those edges I wonder if it makes a difference if I just scratch them up like this would that make a difference? 
Okay, it does soften it up a little bit, but not a lot. Not like a ton. Okay, I'm just going to leave all the hard edges. Because, man, we got a life. <laughs> yeah, okay, enough about that. Okay, let's start the gluing process. The gluing. My plan is not to use matte medium for one reason. I would love to be able to have an open paper, you know, a paper where I can come on top of it um, with a crayon or something. Because if I close it down with matte medium, it's kind of sealed in. So let me try and see if I can uh, just glue on the back of the paper and still have the paper surface left. Hello, Janet, crazy monkey. You know, you gifted me a stencil way back and I just kind of showed a magazine where I used the Panda stencil. You would be so proud of me because it's a mixture of Panda and Stick Guys, Stickman. Uh, here is it. <laughs> Do you remember that stencil? And then another thing, I think I pictured you when you were like a 12-year-old boy, that this would be Janet and this could be me. <laughs> I should actually, I'm so tempted to write Janet up here and then me. <laughs> this is how Janet look inside. <laughs> oh my God, that is hilarious. It's inspired by the artist Pava, you know, the guy that makes these crazy napkins and uh, and mugs. And it's actually more difficult than you would think of to push yourself to draw like a kid. I mean, it's almost as difficult as when you have to like invent and come up with a monster or something <laughs> because uh, your brain is just going, yeah, you know. <laughs> And uh, I was so nice and adult in that drawing that I placed all the arms and legs in the correct places. But I think um, if the monster theme should be developed into something else, drawing ugly kids could be the <laughs> second level. It's just as fun, man. It's just as fun. And especially now with all this grid journaling going on. You know, we actually did grid journaling back in 2018. But let me just, like here, this is an old page spread. Can you imagine having an ugly kid in each grid? Oh, my God, that would be so hilarious. I am so going to do that. And then all the kids could do things like one could place a bugger up here and then the other one looking down and it's like, yucky, you know, like they could be in action. So, um yeah, I'm definitely, definitely, I, I see a stream right there. But right now I am adulting with the Art Nouveau style. But <laughs> I want to drink of the Kool-Aid and do some uh, grit journaling, drawing ugly kids with, you know, uh, a lame hand or what's it called? We <laughs> deliberately draw things like really... <laughs> Like when you deliberately draw things so ugly that it becomes charming, you know. Okay, adulting is way overrated. <laughs> it is. It really is. Look, I think that I'm just gonna save time and glue big pieces on of this because um, I have on the feeling that it will disappear. The only reason I am gluing these uh, pieces on is because I cannot work on top of this page spread because there's too many bulky things and stickles and stuff. So I just need a, a new skin on this uh, spread right here. I can already feel that it's firming up so I wouldn't poke through. <laughs> something crazy oh my god this is so beautiful i'm not gonna or am i i can i can attach it but not cover it up 
Okay, that will be the plan. I, I will not cover up this uh, lady here. Yeah, I can remember that. Ooh, the season has started, huh? We already had two dinner guests this week. And uh, I am proud to tell you guys that I harvested my rhubarbs from the garden. Why did that sound so weird? It is called rhubarbs, right? Rhubarba? Yeah, it, it must be rhubarbs. <laughs> that is like a funky word. On Danish, on Danish, it's called rhubarb, and I made, oh, you won't believe it. Last year, it was the trifly, trifly rhubarb dessert. This year, I outdid myself. I made a crumple with the rhubarb, and it was so good. It was so good. I can't believe how good it was. I baked it in the oven. And the crumble was with, like, you know, roasted, crushed nuts. And it was just so, so delicious. And then I served it with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. And that very acidic rhubarb next to that vanilla ice cream was just... I couldn't even hear what my guest was saying. I was just in the seventh heaven. I was literally just, it, and it's the first time, it's very rare that it happens that I am so fallen over by my own uh, meals, you know. <laughs> but I was so lucky that it happened while we had company. I mean, that was just, I am returning to that dessert for sure. That That's like the favorite. It used to be tiramisu, but you know, you had it, I had it so many times that Yes, it's still good, but, you know, I just had it too many times. And I served it so many times for guests also because it's so freaking easy to do, you know, just with coffee and the butterfingers. It's just, uh, you know, it's a fast and easy dessert. I just got tired of it. Try a strawberry and rhubarb all in a pie? Are you kidding me? I can imagine already. The rhubarb leaves this um, liquid, and then when it mixes up with the sugar, it's so strange in your mouth where you get that acidic piece of rhubarb next to that sugary syrup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I was in seven heaven. And then, you know, um, there is something in Denmark. Um, we call it. Yantelon, which means that don't uh, brag, don't uh, speak too highly about yourself, stay humble. Yeah, basically stay humble and keep your head down, you know. <laughs> and I'm sitting there thinking about, oh my God, I just want to jump out and praise my dessert. <laughs> you know, but I didn't really say anything. But uh, yeah, to you guys, I can say it because you guys know that I'm nuts and you don't know about this Yantelon. But have you heard about it? There's a lot of people who keep saying that, oh, Lena, you're so uh, humble. But I think Danish people in general, we are all like that. <laughs> because unfortunately, we were taught from our society that we shouldn't, we shouldn't think that we are something special, you know. <laughs> so I think it's like a cultural thing, just like, People from Asia always all also have the same, you know, like don't don't be too loud, don't talk too loudly of yourself and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I don't even know why I ventured into that rabbit trail. Okay, uh, no pieing, no type, no type, no distributing, no pieing, peeing. Not peeing, like uh, taking a pee. What the hell is that? <laughs> Pieing, is that when you throw with pies because you're you're mad at the company? So you cannot write them. That would be like, don't email me. No distribution means like, don't send me crap. And then no pieing must be like, don't trash <laughs> and throw pies at me. I don't know. I think I need help with that one. 
Okay. Oh, this is so perfect. It's like Lino. I'm going to change that to an A. So it's like Lina. That could be fun if it showed through. Maybe it will come up. My real name is Lena, you know. <laughs> Maybe it will show up through the layers. We never know. Can only hope. Let's see. Uh, that's Robert's favorite pie. His old girlfriend has to make it for him because I don't do that. <laughs> It's so easy, you know, once you just try it once. Um, and the good thing about pies is that they are messy inside. So if it just doesn't go as planned and gets all sloppy and a mess inside the pie, as long as the lid is nice, you know, it can be a mess. You could commit murder in the middle, in the middle of a pie, whether it's a meat pie or a fruit pie. Um Let's see, invite her over to make one in the other wood. <laughs> I would come. Hi, Jilly. <laughs> uh, oh, my God, you will ask me to do your laundry while I'm there. <laughs> I am not so sure anymore. All you guys with your crazy machines, you have, like, different laundry machines than we do here in Europe. And you even got these lint sheets that you throw into your tumbler and stuff we don't really have that up here <laughs> here's my theory if you do it once they expect it forever bad precedents yeah that's right that is why i don't put up shelves in this house i my hobby still think that i don't know how to operate a drill machine because um, it's smart not to uh, pretend that you can. Okay, I'm procrastinating. I'm thinking, my noodle is thinking. Okay, we should do a circle. And then we should have some borders with washi. And then we should preserve some of that paper. <laughs> so if we move the circle here, we would have preserved that paper. Okay, we're going to give it a go. Always just... Just jump into it, and then there's no regret. The best drawings I ever have done is where I have to correct an error. You know, where I really have to struggle by fixing something. And then I think because the struggle is real, I get satisfied with the result. Because, yeah, I managed to rescue something, something. So... Uh, Starting out perfect is never a good sign in my world. Okay, the plan, the plan is to, um, here I want to draw a picture of maybe this girl right here. It's a sticker gifted to me from Sandra, and it's got this, like, manga style. I think if I had to do her, she's more difficult because not only is she a turned face, but look, she has no nose. <laughs> I I can easy, easily uh, understand drawing no nose on this one. But it will really mess with me on a turned face. Also, those big, big eyes, you know. <laughs> and now you're wondering, why am I not using markers for this style? Because it's very obviously... I need that focus, you free. It's very obviously like a marker. There you go. <clears throat> uh, alcohol marker style, but I don't do uh, well with markers. <laughs> um, I think that I should start blocking in this with maybe some white. White gesso would be a good choice. Just that, you know, like very thin, transparent. And let's say that I'm working on a fresh page in a new sketchbook. I would dip this brush 
so it got like a little bit damped with water, so it's easier for me to tr transport the gesso around the paper. But since I worked with the watercolor on this side of the page, I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> I'm gonna put as little liquid as ever, ever on this page spread here because wouldn't it just be awful if I flip the page? when I'm done and then messed it up. I'm actually thinking that this journal might be a journal where I should only work on like the the right side of the page and then leave the the left side plain because um there are several pages already in this art nouveau style where I have to do so. And I think I found a way to make uh, the blank page interesting anyway. Okay, look at this. Like I worked on this page right here, right? And then this was blank. So I found a lot of, uh, it's like uh, <laughs> labels from products that are from the 1914, 1800. Some, uh, I just found some items, and this is called a scraper board. I don't know what that is, but it looks Art Nouveau, Art Deco to me. So I was thinking this side could be the painting, and this could be a collage area. Because, uh, I mean, who want to mess up? So I did the same here because I worked with gouache on this page right here. And gouache, ooh, huh? if you get it moist, it will smear off. So that's why I feel that I cannot work on this page here. But I think it's nice. You know, I think it, it has a nice flow of collage here and then drawings there. So I think that's going to be um, my approach to this journal. Because in a way, I think that those blank pages... It's nice, it makes a clean statement, but this journal is not a book, it's just, it's just for fun, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, I, if I could have it my way, I would have something on each page. Hi, Helle, welcome to my stream. Helle, I just had to describe to people what the Yentelon is. <laughs> I was Bambi on, Bambi on smooth eyes. How do you ex explain a cultural thing like that? So, okay, I am so behind in chat. Uh, let's see. Here's my theory. If you do it once, they expect it forever. Okay, that was the one with the cooking. Yes, I'm back there. Hi, hello. Uh, Tori, I didn't recognize you without my glasses on. <laughs> Uh, I got to go. Okay, I know it so much. Thank you for taking time to just uh, pop into my stream and say hello. I wish you a nice weekend. Okay, I think that I should block in this area here in a cohesive color to make it like a, a block of its own. So let's try the... What about the color shifts? Um, I have to dig a little bit, <laughs> but I'll see that. Not only for pink or blue. Hmm. I'm thinking the color shift. It was um, a gift from Kathy Berg, and she really blew me away because, you know what, at that time when she gifted me these, I was not able to get them in Denmark. So I had to import them from the US, and I almost fell backwards out of my chair when I saw how much it's going to cost me just to buy a tube of paint so I was really lucky I got this 
very very likable aqua aqua flash and i think that should be around here because it is like a sandra mermaid koi <laughs> so um let me put in the the blue a very thin thin layer let me put in the blue around this frame so we can we can um what's it called um I want to say audition, but that sounds crazy. You can't audition the paint when you already put it down, right? But I just want to see how it looks. Whoop. Is there a question? What is everyone else creating today beside chaos? <laughs> Ooh, Judy's going to make some resin resin writing pens wow that sounds like you know like producing them um in a mold that sounds like really like uh, difficult <laughs> Maybe I should have some paper underneath this. That would be smart. Yeah, it's a very cheap trick to color in all the pages with the same hue, but I think it's very effective. Because it, it just kind of marries together all the different paper pieces, just like the white gesso would if, you know, kind of old, uh, old collage trick. Nothing new there. Oh, I need to be a little bit careful with how much I splurge out because I don't want the full coverage. I'm just going for a small transparent sheen and let's say that the paint was getting a little bit old and thicker instead of diluting it with water i think i would recommend to put in matte a squeeze of matte medium into the bottle to liquefy it up even more Yeah, I, I like the transition from that aqua to this page over here. And now <laughs> I'm thinking it's a little bit boring to have it blue all the way around. So the last top here, I could go greenish or pinkish. I'm going to go pinkish just to see what happens. Judy is never going to sell her stuff. She's been teasing us for almost a year. <laughs> oh, yeah, with your Etsy shop, right? What was it? Journal? Judy, put in your name uh, if you have this shop open. I don't know. Is it open yet? Journal Jewelry, I think, was your Etsy name, right? <laughs> If I can figure out um, IG, I might post some pictures. Yeah, you know what? I am so bad at using Instagram. I use it sporadically, and then suddenly I'm on, and people are so sweet to respond to my post, and then I disappear for months. It's just not in my DNA to uh, think about posting. Isn't it crazy? It's not that I don't want to share. I just, I don't know. It's just don't come natural to me after I make a page that, oh, I should take a picture of it and, and put it out there. Yeah, I like that pink uh, transition. Oh, 
or do I let it let it dry up a little bit? It dries up a little bit funky, I think. It dries up kind of brownish. I just read your comments. <laughs> Talk about pressure. Like all the new things you made for it in the beginning will be listed as vintage when you finally open. <laughs> like vintage charms. Okay, I am not a fan of the pink on top of the brown. It's uh, It's like... They're working against each other. I don't know if the brown is killing the pink or the pink is uh, killing the brown. So I'm just going to see if I can um, make an ombre into this line. <laughs> okay. And I started all of this by saying that if you pick one color, you can marry every items together. And then I use freaking three colors. But maybe, maybe you won't focus on it when it's all done. Look, I'm going over the pink with this limes uh, glitter thing, and it just makes makes me more happy. Yeah, that was nicer. Much nicer. Okay, I'm going to hit it with a heat gun. I think that I should come on top with the washi tape now because then I would be able to expand this border here by working on top of the layered washi so it would be like a layer 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 thing so heat gun <laughs> Okay, I, I know for sure I need to glue down that washi because it's like a, not a metallic washi, but it's not soft. So, okay, what do we have? I got this very pretty selection here. I won't be able to use all of them, but I think all of them got that kind of mermaid vibe, <laughs> you know. That will make me think about Sandra. This one is in particular very nice. Okay, I'm just going to do it. Mikey says just do it. Okay, I got the length. So now I'm going to come back. Can I? Nope. I'm just uh, gonna. I'm gonna take it all off, and then I can. I want to see if I can add glue to it somehow. Okay, I think this was only possible because it's, like I said, a little bit of a stiff plastic washi. If this was like a more generic washi, it would totally curl up like a, like curly fries, you know, when you stretch it out. Burnish, burnish. I need some sort of a scraper. What do we have? I'm looking. I don't have anything. Maybe this one. No, it's not sharp enough. Okay, I would love to have like a plastic credit card so it really could like burnish it down. I think I'm not sure if it's going to peel up. Let's see. 
can you see already how it's disappearing somehow? I think I need to line it up with a black pen because it's kind of kind of disappearing. So let's try and etch it. Okay, now I need to come in from this direction. Otherwise, I think I will smear the ink. Ooh. <laughs> Did you see how I just rested the ruler on top of the freshly inked line? I got really lucky there that it didn't uh, pick up and smeared it. I want to draw next to the washi because like I said, the washi is this plastic dude. So I think the ink will make pearls on it, like um, not grab the surface. Okay, it's getting a little bit wider here. Okay, and now comes the most anal part about this whole Art Nouveau style. The detail, people, the detail. You see, I need to come in with a very fine liner and work on this. So what I'm just thinking on the top of my mind is to continue the pattern from the washi. And um, suddenly time flew and it was Sunday. <laughs> this takes an awful lot of time. Let me just do it on some of it so you can kind of follow the madness. But that's actually how I spontaneously, what my mind is thinking when I'm doing these um, spontaneously Art Nouveau-ish pages. You simply just, you're just like winging it on the way. But let me just do a couple and then you'll see that I'm right. That it's a good call. Even though that it takes a bunch of time. I think I should do this off camera, I know. <laughs> I'm just going to do a little bit. Oops, that was wonky. I think when Bob Owen goes on, I'm going to stop my stream because I love, I would just love to lurk Bob while I'm filling in this right here but you have to imagine that th this is done on this side over here also to make it cohesive and what i did was just like a kid following the pattern of the washi and i could even be so crazy to have this kind of pattern inside this shape right here just to marry things together okay look at my light going totally nuts what happens there's like too much white here so we have to do like this okay there's something crazy going on with my light i'm sorry um oh i cleaned my rule <laughs> you know what i got this this um hand sanitizer that's actually the best you know you squeeze out a dollar on a tissue and then just wipe the ruler through the hand sanitizer it takes it all um okay let's see 
my plan is that I want to marry these page spreads together with one long line of washi. And then unfortunately, this was a sticker. What the hell is wrong with my light? Okay, I'm just gonna shut, kill one of the lamps. Okay. Unfortunately, this is a sticker where there's like no watercolor behind it. So I, the only thing uh, that I have to work with is a washi line going this way and then up here through the tail of the koi. I don't know how else I'm going to solve this. Now I have to pick the washi that's going this way and up here. Oh man, these two are so beautiful. I already selected these two, these two. And the, I don't even mind that I am layering up, you know, on top of this over here. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, doodle my way out of it. I don't like having um, the washi going past the... <laughs> What's the word for it? You know, with a page is a simple here in the book. So I would personally cut it up. There's also something with my journal. It's uh, It's got like this uh, wonky. I would simply not trust that, you know, it would behave nicely if it, the journal got more fat from eating a rhubarb pie. <laughs> You know, I would allow it to be flexible in the spine area. Okay, this is where it's kind of exciting, you know. Because uh, I'm thinking it should end just like there. And then some doodling down here. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're just going to do it. Okay, what's particularly important with this here is that it must have contact to the square where the mermaid is so I have to glue that side on first look you wouldn't be able to do this with normal washi it would be a peanut and you know be like a teenager non-negotiable so I start by gluing this edge here first and whatever height I get is what counts. Meaning that now this one sets the tone for where this washi should go because it ends perfectly right here. That's likable, right? So this one, I have to follow up. So, guys, did you guys know that Saturday is the big TV day, you know, where you put on your nicest clothes, you mix those martinis, and then you watch the King Coronation of UK? Oh, my God. Our TV channels are going crazy about the coronation. And we are going to watch, sure, we are going to watch. I'm, I'm going to be there at 10 in the morning here in Danish time. Raising my glass, toasting Dot. And wishing her congratulations on her new king. England has not had a king for such a long time. Most famous was Henry VIII, right? Don't think that. Charles is going to be just as fun and entertaining in that area. But, uh, hey, it's exciting. Okay, back to the pen work here. I want a top line here for sure. So I'm just going to put that one in. I'm a little pissed that I didn't get my invitation. <laughs> you didn't get the invitation. Oh, no. Can we blame it on the on the COVID? Not not anymore. That must be a mistake. I am sure of it. But um, I don't know if uh, 
it's a thing in the US, but here in Europe, we got Mr. X. And Mr. X is an uninvited guest who party crash the jet sets parties, whether it's wedding, you know, or um, uh, ce celebrating um, anniversaries and stuff like that. I am so, so excited to see if Mr. X is going to party crash. Is it called that? The coronation in some way. Like if there is some sort of uh, party. At, at, you know, they got so many uh, castles and palaces. There must be one of these castles that's going to be crashed by Mr. X. I can't wait. Here I have totally respect for that ink that still might be wet. I need the ruler in this angle. So I'm going to dry this just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> You're blaming Camilla. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I pronounced the name wrong. Camilla. You know, <laughs> it is so funny the way that they say the word Camilla. We laugh about it here in Denmark because even our Danish journalists pronounced it like with that royal <laughs> apple in their mouth. Camilla. <laughs> because now she's like almost royalty, you know. For a long time, she wasn't. <gasps> Did you see that? I talked and inked at the same time, and it went rogue. No. That's it. I'm going to end my stream. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I won't admit it, but when I'm doing this Art Nouveau style, this is not okay. This bothers me. Oh, man. <clears throat> this bothers me when I'm doing this Art Nouveau style. So I'm actually going to go on top and make the whole line a little smidgen fatter. And uh, I think Janet invented the word analistic on my last live stream. This is a perfect Friday example of being analistic. Okay, that didn't even work. Okay, I'm going to mess with it when Bob Owen is on. But then um, I can be so anal with these lines that, <clears throat> <clears throat> sorry, when the future I open this page spread, I don't even see what's on the page except that wonky line. <laughs> So that's why for me it is important to do whatever is in my power to fix that monkey poo because it's a, what's the opposite of eye candy? And look here, I even was up scratching the washi. Yeah, okay, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with that while I'm live. I'm simply just gonna fatten up this whole line down here. You get it? Um, you know what? Some people don't really get it, but the, that also bothers me. I'm so tempted to try and wipe it off. I know I can wipe it off right now with a baby wipe, but can I wipe it off totally? Okay, experiment. Okay, we're going to clean our ruler. We're going to take the baby wipe. We're going to put the ruler down where we don't want the baby wipe to contaminate the page. And then we're going to try and retract that line from the wet washi. There. Now it's gone. Can you see now it's no longer on the washi? So uh, it's just going to have to dry. Yeah. Okay, I'm not going to fiddle with that because... Um, it's going to make me drink. <laughs> it's, it's the not for now. Okay, I'm thinking that I would continue a line up here. 
you know, because in Art Nouveau, you can have that like a like a frame, but it, I think it should be the same width at, as this washi here. So this roll right here is the same width. So let me just uh, lay it down. But can you see how uh, you can, we can sort of jazz up a page spread to be a Art Nouveau lookalike? It takes a lot of doodling, but it's possible. I'm not sure that it's so streaming friendly, though. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a little bit, it must be so tedious for you guys to watch this. Um, let's see. Hi, Leah. <laughs> Just snuggling my new grandson and lurking. Oh, congratulations with your grandson. Oh, my God. You're so lucky. I can't wait until it's my turn. I'm, I'm pretty sure that one day. One shiny day, it will be my turn. I'm going to be the perfect grandma because I'm so childish, you know. <laughs> oh, this is good. Perfection. It's just exactly to the edge. Like it. <clears throat> the question is, um, what about the the filler in the border well i'm just gonna do that same you know that filler i got up here i'm gonna continue it all the way down here and all the way here so it's gonna be like like cohesive <clears throat> but like i said that's a, a job to do when the the camera is off <laughs> Okay, this time, try not to hit the washi. The washi is so plastic that the ink will like never dry on it. So it's very stupid to try and paint in that plastic washi. Okay, we're gonna leave it there. Next time, I will show you when it's finished. Now I want to work on this. <clears throat> I think it would be nice to have a thicker line here. So I think I want to be bold and then uh, simply just grab a fat Posca pen and redo this circle line. So let me just uh, grab a Posca. Ooh, I forgot. Remember those glitter Posca? Oh my god, that was so funny. Okay, blue, pink, purple can be very good candidates to uh, doodle with. Oh, this pink, actually. Very good uh, candidates to doodle with on this page. Because you know what? We have to doodle a frame in this border right here. You know, just like, like this. So... Uh, I'm so happy that, <laughs> that I just bumped into those glitter poskas. And I know you probably shouldn't doodle so much on top of this color shift acrylic paint. But I'm going to take the risk. Okay, the tough thing here is how the line work is meeting up. So you have to be a little bit focused because you're sometimes turning or, you know, doing stuff like with your hand. So the line work becomes a skewer. 
how to lift it up without smearing it like this maybe okay. better that's a good place to start now comes the worst part i have to hand draw a thicker line that's going out here and because i want that layered look i'm gonna stop the line work behind this border here and now it's going to be agony to watch because i'm going to be totally silenced because otherwise i can't draw a circle line <laughs> oh let's see chat so it can dry up a little bit uh you enjoy all that you do oh thank you <laughs> you're still waiting to be a grandma judy i would love to be a grandma oh my god preferably now you know like the sooner the better but my son, he's only 21, so I think, yeah. I don't think that he wants to be a parent <laughs> in the next five years, maybe. You have never seen the glitter Poskas? Oh, they are really, really nice. The glitter pens that I had before them was the Jane Davenport ones, and I really liked them a lot. They were very strong and doable, and they go on top of anything, you know. You know, it's just like um, a fun, fun toy. And then I realized that these glitter pens from Posca is somewhat the same kind of animal. Okay, I need to shake it up. <laughs> I haven't used it for a while. So if you got the Jane Davenport glitter glitch pens these are very very similar but they are posca so they got a little bit different kind of nib a little bit firmer but very very similar outcome if you, okay i'm showing you one without a label the reason why i took the label out of this is because i wanted to see how much product was left in it but they actually come looking like this and I cannot tell the difference between these and the Poscas. So if you're Michaels or whatever shop you got in the US or where you live is having a sale on these, uh, what was it called? Glitter glitch or something. It could be worth browsing price wise if you shouldn't grab a set of Jane Davenport's instead, I think you can save, like, even though Jane Davenport is not, like, on the cheap end, uh, you can you can still save some, I think. Or maybe these were just expensive because they were just newly released. I don't know. Uh, okay, now let's uh, freehand draw that circle. <laughs> Stop talking now. Oh, this is gonna be a piece. I don't know. I don't want to sketch it first with a pencil because I can't even hit the pencil line either when I come on top of that with a Posca. Isn't that pathetic? So I got like one job, one chance to do this. <laughs> okay, here we go. The trick here is to understand that not everything can be on the paper. So don't try to force it in, you know, don't uh, compromise the, oh, the thickness by trying to force it in on the paper. That's wonky up here. Maybe if you do like this, maybe it helped. And at a moment like this is where the cat decides to jump up on the table, usually. As best as it's going to get, it bothers me a little bit up here on the top, but I think I'm going to live with it. Yeah, I'm living with it. It's as good as it gets. Maybe I can uh, fatten it up a little bit to change the eye it's 
smart people would probably go out into their kitchen and grab a dinner plate and see, you know, you grab a couple of plates and then try and see if you can get two or three sizes of plates. But then I have to confess that you have to start with the outer ring in order to be able to center your plates perfectly. So uh, that's also, uh, you have to take, if you're using the, let's call it the plate method, <laughs> inventing a new word, always start with the outer ring. Uh, because if you start with the inner circle, it's tough to place the outer ring perfect symmetrically. If it matters, and it does, it does in this Art Nouveau. I think it's going to be wonky because there's a lot of doodling and stuff. So the more straight you can get it, I think the better. This inner circle here, I would love if it had a different color. So it's like a, a, a totally different background color than uh, what's going on here. Uh, we can either, we cannot go white because the center is white, right? What guys, what should we do? Are you guys thinking green also or purple? We got some, uh, <clears throat> almost like, imagine if I could hit this color right here in here. Okay, to give myself that ability, I think I should go in with clear uh, white gesso and then just give myself a uniform base color inside the, the frame. <laughs> Damn, I'm talking a lot today. I feel I have to cover up so much ground before Bob Owen starts to stream. You know, I'm really actually, I know it looks like I'm totally stressed when I'm working with these page, page spreads, but I really am adoring the Art Nouveau style because it consists of so many different elements each one of them is something that i haven't done in a long while no now i'm covering up that good scrap of paper yeah that's how it goes it's okay but there oh shoot there's just so many uh different work process that the it's very versatile. I like it a lot. I feel that my fat face is in the frame. Yeah, you're going to hate me when I tell you that if I paint wrong here, I would go back and redo the black line. <laughs> Look, I'm laughing and then I'm touching the line. Oh, no. Oh, did you see that? Yeah, I'm definitely going to have a good time when Bob Owen is streaming. I suddenly question whether this is a stream-friendly topic because it can really get, like, for people with OCD, it's nerve-wracking. Oh my god. I'm using a flat brush, but even though I'm having a flat brush, it's like I'm a little bit out of control. You know what I mean? Oh. I have not painted with acrylic for a long time. So I also... Uh, got this thought in my head that I can make a lot of mistakes when I'm using acrylic based products you know like gesso because with watercolor you can always like lift off you always get like a second chance when you make goofers but not with acrylic paint I feel but maybe it's just because I'm not practiced with the media so I don't see how easy it is to redo things but i know for sure that it's a good call to give myself a 
neutral background before I come on top and color in this ring here. I'm glad Kathy Arbor is not watching <laughs> this brushwork right here. It looks good. Oh, thank you, Judy. <laughs> There's such a thing called a compass that works really well. Oh, my God, Janet. I just subtracted a rhubarb crumpled pie slice from your share. <laughs> it's true. Why didn't I think about that? I think I even have one from my son, you know, from when he went to school. I kind of regret picking gesso and not just white acrylic. Can you see how the gesso is uh, picking up the underlayer color and just let it go through? So it's it's not white anymore. <laughs> so when I finally get to the end of this ring, it's uh, contaminated white. So, you know, you can just keep on in infinity with that ending coat. Okay, I think we all get the picture. I should just lay down the brush before I make an accident with my sleeve or something. Yeah, we're going to lay down. Oh, look at that. That is awful. And it's going to shine through. I just know it. Okay, this is a rapid trail. For you guys who also with excitement is following along Mount Everest year after year, don't ask why I became this way. From today and eight days ahead is where they're planning to do the first summit of 2023 to Mount Everest. And I totally dig those things and I'm following Alan Arnett's vlog. He's, he's got like a weekly update and he usually refresh his weekly update with a YouTube upload every Sunday. I cannot wait <laughs> to hear about what's going on on Everest and what happened this week because, you know, it's just exciting. Oh man. But now, and then till you know the season on Everest ends the season that when this month ends. So it's now and three weeks ahead that we got all the gossip from Mount Everest. Uh definitely purple. It should be purple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I totally can see that. Now comes the question: what? purple let me see what i have of uh, acrylic purples i think i got a few Okay, this is just a suggestion. Isn't this kinky? Like it's a, a thick purple. <laughs> or maybe it's too dark. I don't know. We should mix the purple. Let me see. Mm. 
Are they two purple purple? I think these two are the same. Bye, Judy. Take care. <laughs> Judy has to go because she has to work on her Etsy shop. <laughs> oh, you just got grocery delivered. Have a nice weekend, Judy. Um, I'm leaning towards this because I can see that this hue is in the washi. So I'm, ju I'm just going to go with this one. Oh my god, I just looked at the time. Guys, did you know that in 15 minutes, Bob Owen is coming on? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that I can finish this in 15 minutes. Because you saw how much time I spent painting the circle white. And now I have to paint it in a, in a color. But anyway, just to warn you guys, I'm ending my stream when Bob Owen comes on and I'm the kind of distracted idiot that I probably notice it like two seconds before Bob Owen turns her camera so it would be like a very swift goodbye like thank you for coming hi hi <laughs> oh I love this color this is so art nouveau I have decided yeah 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 yeah, yeah. this was a good call can you just imagine this background color for this circle and then with a lot of golden doodle on top of it? Like uh, going really crazy with this. Um, is it called a Krylon pen? I don't know what the name of this Christmas pen is. But you kind of get good deals during Christmas month in the supermarket on these kind of I won't even say glitter, but it's more like a golden golden pen on steroids. It's going to look so fabulous with this uh, thick purple background here. Oh my God, I can barely paint. Uh, yeah, this is the tedious part of this. Uh, page spread style but I love it I love it oh my god I'm not gonna finish I think that um, I also would like to top this off with um, an old school product like uh, what's the name of it I know, I, I'm not putting it on top of the splurge acrylic. Remember these enamel accents from Tim Holtz? Um, they give like a raised texture when you use them. And I think they would be lovely to have like a fl floral mix. Like imagine, <laughs> you look at the line work here that's done with a golden print. And you try to emulate that with your Krylon pen. And then in between you put flowers that you dot in like enamel dots with this uh, tool right there. Going to be perfect. I, I kid you not. I'm going to do that on that border here. And you know <laughs> what is so funny about this style of drawing? I will probably end up with a kick-ass back background and a kick-ass border and then put the level of, press of, of pressure even higher on myself because I still have not painted anything inside this damn circle. So it's probably just going to be an empty circle until I pull myself together and then uh, see if I can uh, do a manga rendition of 
of the mermaid from the sticker. But I am having such fun with these steps right now. I don't even feel that I am painting something. I, I only feel that I am blocking out areas with a color. So it doesn't feel like like painting yet, if you know what I mean. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. You know, sometimes when you build up a page, there are very hard uh, section where you actually have to draw something. I don't feel that I'm in that section right now. I just feel that I'm feeling out and having fun. But I so hope that you guys uh, fall in love with this uh, journal style too. And if you don't want to draw a face, I can totally understand if you've got like this awesome stencil or even a collage piece that you can piece in because you got this circle area right here and nothing would look strange or off. You know what I mean? Like, like you have a small significant area where you can actually let your hair down and then just collage in whatever you desire. I just want to paint because I don't know. I think there is a challenge. There is a there is a challenge hidden in trying to do a my rendition of that sticker that Sandra gifted me. So uh, that's just how weird I am. Oh my god! No. Okay, maybe the camera didn't catch that. I should totally lean in with my head in front of what I'm painting so you guys cannot see what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, I want a giveaway from Didi. I want one of the art magazines that she sliced up to a magazine, tiny magazine journal. Woohoo! I ran out to the mailbox today to see if it arrived because then I would play in it today, but it has not arrived yet. I kind of want to uh, re-watch Lori Paint Girlie's cut up of her Daphne's magazine and see if I can do the same with the giveaway prize that's going to arrive from Dee Dee. Okay, now it's getting more and more narrow here. Now I should definitely stop talking. Oh, man. That's what I think is the worst part of this. Uh, it's all those straight, straight things, straight lines. Where my ruler? Okay, I'm just gonna use this one. Nay, nay, and did you see? <laughs> I dropped it. Oh my god. And it didn't even work. It went underneath. Oh, in two seconds, I'm going to put my sleeve in that. And this is pure agony to watch. It's gonna, I'm so happy I didn't do the doodles. Thank you guys that I didn't do the doodles first on this border here. Oh. Okay. It is what it is. <laughs> Maybe I should actually think about saying goodbye because the time is running out on me. Uh, Hi, Safria. Welcome to my stream. You just made it to the end. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm going to continue working on this while Bob Owen is uh, on. And then uh, next time I stream working in this journal, I can show you the progress. And because these spreads take so long time, I think I'm just going to have open pages where I work a little bit on something and then a little bit on some other things but always trying to keep it into one element. Like today we could say we worked on borderline. <laughs> borderline. <laughs> that sounded like an illness. Today <laughs> we worked on this uh, border edge here and some of the circle. So is that a good plan if you guys want to follow along in this uh, Art Nouveau style? Um Thank you. <laughs> Fabulous dream. Look forward to next time. Yay. Thank you, Tori. Tapla. But I think that uh, it's a great plan. Perfect. Because I know it's a little bit tedious, but hey, it comes with the game, you know. And the tediousness is the waster of timeness that also gives me the feeling of having a good time. I know it sounds weird. But I really like these small jobs that now I got a job to fill out the borders, paint this, you know. So I know what to do for the next couple of hours because sometimes I got blank page syndrome where I look at a blank page and don't know what to do, but I just want to do something. So I'll make them watch Centennial <laughs> Tedious times thousands. <laughs> Oh, that's good to hear. That's good to know because there is something really relaxing in knowing exactly what you have to do step by step by step. It's like following, you know, a recipe. So it gives you a good momentum. But um, thank you so much for coming my way on a busy Friday. I really, really appreciate it a lot. And uh, I'm going to be lurking bar. So I'm just going to say hello <laughs> and goodbye now. So uh, head on over to the bathroom and then back to bar. Nice and good weekend to all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Riri. Thank you, Deb. <laughs>